Welcome back everybody, High Tech Lab here. I know it sounds a little echoey, that's because we're in a shipping container and despite me trying to talk quietly, it's still pretty loud. This is the start of a new project. In this project, we're going to be putting together a couple of containers and building a new facility for product testing, uh, demonstrations, uh, tutorials, all that kind of good stuff. So this is one of two containers. There is another container on the other side of this wall. It's windy outside, so we're trying to limit how much recording we do there. So if there's any wind noise in this video, I apologize in advance, but we're gonna weld the two containers together, just like you would if you were building something like, say, a container home. We're gonna cut out this wall in between, insulate this place, and uh, build something really cool out of it. So this will be a multi-part series. Uh, let's take a look at what we got going on outside. So it may take you a second watching the video to get your bearings on things, but we were just in this container that is on your left, but there's also a container on the right. Now these doors face opposite directions, and the reason we did that is so that when they're welded together and the wall is cut out, we essentially have a way for air to flow through north to south. So right now the sun is shining on me from the south. This way over here is south. You know, it'll work out well for the wind patterns here. And then a couple other plans we have for this, we're going to put a solar array flat on the roof. Uh, when all is said and done, have that be our testing solar array. So a lot to go on on this project. But without further ado, we're going to get these things a little bit more trued up and welded together. So right here, we're looking at the corner posts of the container. You can see they're about an inch difference in here, maybe an inch and a half, either way. Uh, we're going to have to lift these up with the excavator and get them uh, true to each other. We're trying to close this gap right here because we're actually going to run a weld the full length between these two containers. That way everything is sealed and waterproof. While this gap may seem like a lot to try and weld up, I have a piece of rebar to use as a demonstration. I likely won't use rebar because it's really difficult to weld to but we're gonna essentially lay it in here and run a weld bead on both sides. That way we can fill the gap and create a nice waterproof seal. It's also gonna add a bunch of structure having this round rod here um, because most of the structure of a shipping container is in the walls. And when we go start cutting walls out, we wanna make sure this is nice and uh, strong to itself and that we're not losing a bunch of the structural integrity of the shipping container. So the welding machine we're using for this project is our Miller Multimatic 215. This machine does everything, stick, MIG, TIG, you know, wire feed, flux core, um, however you want to do it, this machine will do it. Now that is going to be powered by a generator. We have a Kohler generator down here on the other side. This is a generator compressor welder, but I don't have long enough uh, stingers for this. Instead, we're just using it as a power source and that is powering our uh, Miller welding machine. As far as our welding rods, I have 1 8 inch 6011 rods. This is what I'll be using for the majority of uh, the welding process. Now I chose these because these work really good if you have any rust or impurities or in our case some paint. It should be able to burn through that and still create a pretty structural weld. Now 6011 is not the prettiest welding rod and uh, we're not in this video telling you how to weld structurally or any of that, but this is my rod of choice and what we're gonna be using for this project. So things are gonna happen fast once we start getting the excavator going and whatnot. So just giving you a little bit more overview, we're gonna lift up this container until these two are flush with each other and I'm gonna get probably a two inch uh, stringer on these uh, corner eyelets. And again, I need to make sure this is lined up with this because we're gonna be welding the full length. And even though that will be welded, there'll be enough give to it so that when we go to the other side and level that out, everything will be uh, lined up nicely and we'll be able to go from there. In a perfect world, these containers would be on flat level ground, but here at the ranch, we don't have exactly that. It's mostly level but the little bits of lows and highs is what causes this to not line up just right. Alrighty, so we got the top welded together. Now we're using a chain binder and pulling this bottom gap uh, closed together. Looks like it's working pretty well so far, but a little dangerous um, because, you know, if the chain snaps, it's got a lot of force. So if you're doing this, definitely be careful. But yeah, you can see that gap is slowly starting to close with each crank of this chain binder.
So like, here's an example. I got the chain and come along down here. Uh, we tightened it together as much as we can. There's about, uh, about 330 seconds gap in there. But I can't really clean this out in here uh, to get a good weld with penetration. So I cleaned up these two sides instead. And I have this piece of rebar that I kind of ground the rust and stuff off. And that'll go right in there. And then I'm gonna weld both sides of that. And that'll get, keep it strong enough so that we can take the chain off and then I can use my cutting wheel and whatnot, cut a bevel in here and get nice strong welds on there. But this is kind of the same technique that I'm gonna be using on the roof uh, to fill in that seam. We'll show you up there on the roof here in a second because now that this is chained together, that gap tightened up quite a bit and uh, I think it's gonna work out quite well. Okay, so we're about done for the day. It is absolutely gorgeous lighting out here, but uh, it's getting a little too dark to keep going on with our project. A couple of things I want to show you before we call it a day. Uh, we got the corners welded. They are off about uh, 5 eighths of an inch, uh, but that's not the end of the world. It actually makes it easier on the doors. This container here is the one with the door, uh, so the doors can swing a full 180 degrees open. The other thing you're looking at, this is my uh, rebar. Just for example, I would like to get some smooth rod that's nice and uh, cleaned up. It doesn't have all the ribs of the rebar. But you can see even if we did use that, it would lay into that crack really nicely. We can weld on both sides and uh, go from there. Follow me to the other end of the container and you will see we did the exact same thing down there. Uh, now, one thing I didn't mention earlier is we had to cut some chamfers. So we cut it at about 45 degrees on each side. I switched from 6011 to 7018. So this section right here is where we chamfered it. This nasty, you know, bird splatter is the 6011, which really didn't work. This I'm gonna still probably gouge out and uh, re-weld because I'm really not too thrilled how it came uh, together. But uh, that's for a different day. We'll come back to this. I'm, uh, I'm not too thrilled about that, but that's okay. All the YouTube commenters will still judge. But other than that, um, that's about it for today. Uh, we still have a lot of welding and cutting and grinding ahead of us, but that's okay. Stay tuned for the next episode. If you're not already subscribed to the channel, be sure to hit the subscribe button now. You've been watching High Tech Lab, and if you want to see more content, be sure to check out my other videos as well as currentconnected.com. I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye now.